live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Boomi World 2019 from DC. I'm Lisa Martin, John Furrier is my co-host for the next couple days, and we're very pleased to welcome back to theCUBE the Boomi CEO, Chris McNabb. Chris, welcome back. Lisa, it's great to be here, it's always fun. It, the energy that you guys kicked off everything with this morning, the keynote, it was awesome, it was electric. I love the numbers that you started with. You know, Boomi World 18 was about 11 months ago, and we were talking, I was watching those videos back the other day, you had about 7,500 customers then. Yep. You now have over 9,000 customers in yep. 80 plus countries, over 1,500 endpoints integrated, 580 partners, I could go on and on, 97% renewal keep rate. Selling. <laughs> it's amazing though, the momentum that you guys have carried into DC in just a short time period. Tell us about that. You know, Lisa, it, it, it's really been the result of, you know, not only hard work by our team, you know, we continue to innovate for our product and bring new things to market, but it's our customers that drive adoption, and it's our, we use customer references to gain new customers, and it's their stories that resonate with the new prospects that come on board. It's our 580 partners making sure that when our customers and prospects buy into the Boomi uh, platform, that they get implemented, and they shorten the time frame, and they bring intelligence and smarts, and it's our community. It's the 65,000 people that are already there solving problems that are helping our newer uh, customers get onboarded and get success early. So it's those four legs of the stool, it's the entire ecosystem as that continues to, to go, all of us are going along for the ride. You know, last year we asked you um, what you were investing in, uh, your team as well, and the theme was pretty consistent across the board. Product first yeah. and foremost, because the product is continuing to grow, an enabling platform with some great stuff there. Go to market, yeah. and then the customer success equation. Yeah. Not success, customer success organization, although you have a lot there, the equation. Yeah. Where are you guys this year on those three points? Yeah, so tremendous investment in the product. You're going to hear tons of announcements. I, my announcements were the tip of the iceberg. We've got huge announcements in API management and the things that we're doing there. There's event-driven architecture announcements. There's the conversational AI. We're adding voice to integration platform as a service with the help of Accenture. So you can now talk to your platform and interact with your enter enterprise applications. That's just the tip of the iceberg on the product side. We've got data hub things and so on. You know, when we look at the other parts, John, and particularly around customer success, we're doing really well there. You know, our customer success rate, our retention rate is now 95, 96%. Our customer satisfaction with around 97%. And it's our customer success organization that helps make sure services are being implemented right, partners are doing the right thing, success and outcomes are being delivered, and we engage to make sure that happens. If you need a little bit of Boomi help, Boomi help comes. And we partner over the success of that, and I think when you look at the key KPIs are, you know, around churn retention, as well as customer sat, I think we're doing a really nice job there. On the follow-up on that, one of the things we've been observing and reporting on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE is the successful companies are the ones that have, obviously, great product, but in the cloud era, the data is a big part of it. You guys have a unified data platform. We talked about this last year, how you have anonymous data, you mentioned on your keynote. This yeah. is, you get insights. So this is, again, yeah. Copa Software does this. A lot of the successful, profitable companies yeah. have a nice business model by leveraging the data. Yeah. How does that fit into the equation for customer success? And I want you to explain the equation specifically Specifically, I mean, you guys, great formula for customer focus, I get that, yep. but what is the equation now that you have this unique, modern value proposition? Yeah, you know, I think the equation for us is quite simple. So we do leverage all the metadata. You know, every single process that's, that's ever been run, we know how long it took and did it have an error. We know, we know how people build connections and we have all that metadata, we leverage that for our customers. So when we look at our customers, you know, we have a life cycle that we walk them through. When you talk about the equation, we have a framework you know, a life cycle. How do we engage at sales to make sure sales is not overselling it? How do we get them to close so they look at us as a partner? How do we make sure the implementation goes well, whether they do it alone with a partner or with us? Right, get them to success, get them through renewal, and then how can we help them expand, land and expand and do more things in their enterprise to continue the, win, the winning success that they established in, uh, initially. You talked this morning, uh, re revealing Boomi's competitive, unfair competitive advantage yeah. to customers. 
One of the things that we talk about, Chris, at every show, and you probably talk about this all the time too, yeah. is, is data, it's the new oil, it's gold, it's the lifeblood of a business. If, yes, yeah. if an organization, whether it is an, an incumbent established business that might have brittle technology and disparate systems, if that type of company can't actually see all the data, have the visibility, and yeah. ensure that all of the endpoints are sharing from a single source of truth, yeah. that data value is, is, is capped, right? Yeah. It's, it's, you guys leveraging that, I think it's over 30 terabytes of anonymized metadata. It is. is a great example of unlocking the power of the data that you have to make your customers better, make them more successful, and keep them, keep them which you've obviously done. Yeah, you know, it's a, it, it's a part of the ecosystem play that I continuously talk about. As customers use our platform, they instill it with their knowledge, experience, right, and their expertise. Well, we do, as a pure cloud provider, because I store how they map this field to that field, how long this process took, and all of these kinds of things that make up that repository, I can now, as a, as a cloud platform, lever that up and I can increase the productivity for everybody in the ecosystem. So as, as customers put a little bit in themselves, they get a 10x return out or a massive return out in terms of productivity and leverage that our platform is able to provide, but it takes both of us together to do that. Chris, I want to talk about the hard news this morning. You guys announced um, with Accenture um, a big partnership around conversational AI. Yes. Um, Accenture was on stage. Yeah. Um, their brand, their expertise. Yeah. Coming together with you guys. That's right. In a joint partnership. Could you explain for a minute what that is about? Just take a minute to explain the partnership and the solution specifically. Yeah, so when you look at conversational AI, it's the use of natural language, right, to uh, work with technology and you can't pre-program, you have to understand the variations of things, you have to understand voice as identity, so when I say my pipeline report, it knows it's me, it's my authorization, it gets my data. Accenture brings the, the conversational AI experience, technology and solutions to the table, and we're now linking and partnering that into our integration capabilities and connective capabilities, so as a net result, people can talk to their phone and interact with their workflows and interact with their data stores to get data, approve workflows, et cetera, in a very natural way. Uh, what does Boomi do and what does Accenture do? Because they're involved, you guys have a team, you're teamed up. What, Correct. What's the relationship? Take a minute to explain the relationship. Who's doing what? So Accenture brings much of the voice capabilities. Uh, so when we mentioned this morning that language isn't a barrier, I'd like to offer up the service in Spanish and French and English English, et cetera. Accenture does all of that work. So they are the natural language processing, they are the language independent part of that, and we're all the connectivity part. We are the workflows, we are the integration. We, Accenture feeds us something, whether it comes, it can come in multiple languages over WhatsApp, chat, voice, it doesn't matter, comes to me, and then we do the natural uh, unlocking of the data. That's their cetera. converse piece, that converse and Boomi working together? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, so B, B in the Boomiverse, you mean? Yeah. So Boomiverse and B, the introduction of our astronaut B, who's going to lead you on a, a, you know, a mission through our community and be your bot, that's a working bot, you know, and we're going to leverage that kind of capability through that as well. Great. One of the interesting things about the conversational AI is that, you know, we all as consumers, have interacted probably pretty recently with a call center for something. Yeah. And I loved how Leticia, who's going to be on from Accenture later today with John and me, was talking about, we've all been there going agent, agent, yeah. agent. Uh -huh. And a few months ago, while working for theCUBE, I realized, oh actually, as frustrating as it is sometimes, we have the opportunity to help train the models. But I'd love to get your perspective on what, what Boomi and Accenture are seeing in, in organizations, executive suites, about the perception of conversational AI and the impact. They see the impact possibilities that Accenture and Boomi can bring, and are they ready for that? You know, I, I think there's going to be a bit of an educational process uh, with leaders in the business, but if you look at, you know, Letitia's, I think, second slide where she says, seven million dollars being spent on password resets with humans. When voice is your identity, that you don't need that anymore. You don't have to remember passwords, you don't have to reset things. The, the, the immense benefit for, for organizations is huge. 25% reduction in OPEX. 
That's gonna get people's attention. They're gonna have to work our way through it and we're gonna work through the process with them. Okay, let's do a small thing, let's try it out, let's get it working, let's scale it, and let's get it to enterprise it's, scale. It speaks to an integration opportunity. I mean, voice, video, other mediums. Yeah. It's an integration game, that's what you guys are doing. Correct. And that's the whole benefit of Boomi. I'd like to get your thoughts on um, your success formula and how you guys are going to ride this wave going forward because you have a modern infrastructure, modern solution, you get projects off the ground quickly for customers, you get the value quickly. This is a mega trend. People, they don't want projects backing up, they want to get them done quick. Yep. You guys are solving that big problem. What's next? Where are you investing? What's your thoughts on the business? What do you do? Well, you know, in terms of what's next, so, so we really did go after the entire transformation problem. Integration's not just data us. It's people, it's devices, it's your processes, right? So we, we look at it holistically, we've done that. We brought intelligence in, so now we're providing insights, data privacy insights that we talked about in the keynotes, conversational AI, and that's the start. But we've got to do a better job of under, you know, dashboards, other insights. How, what is the return on investment of a Boomi, of a Boomi purchase and how much is it helping? Yeah. To what degree is Transform making a bottom line impact in your business? Having the, the analytics to support that is going to be big. You know, Lisa and I were talking on the intro around you can't hide success anymore, you can't hide the ball. Because you can instrument the outcomes yeah. and the outcomes are either you're getting paid for value or you're achieving a mission, whether it's the Veterans or the American Cancer Institute, usage of an app. You can't hide the ball anymore. That's it's right. It's either successful or not. You guys are very customer centric, got hundreds of use cases, uh, best practices. This is your focus. Peep, the people part of success is, has been a missing link in the digital transformation. Process, technology, people, yeah. culture. Yep. You guys are breaking through. Is that because the wins people are getting? Is that the energy? Is that the people? What's the people equation on your end that you've been so successful with? You guys are having su um, success you know, there. The, the boomy culture, when we, when we talk internally, you know, who are we and what do we value? One of the first things we talk about is we are customer first. What that means to us is outcomes matter. It's not about buying our technology. It's not about getting data. It's about an outcome. And we talked about a lot, a lot of outcomes today. In fact, at this show, throughout all of the presentations, there will be roughly 100 different customer outcome stories that are shared globally. So when we talk about breaking through, because we want to partner with them and join them in their goal, and whatever it takes to do that, that starts to resonate. It's taken a while to resonate, but now it really is. And when you feel the energy in the floor, I hope you guys feel the same thing. You know, it's just enormous and it's really starting to grow and we couldn't be happier. One of the cool things that I heard yesterday, Chris, I have had the opportunity to talk to a number of your customers in the last week who said, I always say, you know, tell me about the differentiators, the technical differentiators. Uh, the cloud native always comes up, the low code. We yeah. talked yesterday about CFOs becoming citizen developers, and I went, wow, really, do they know that? Yeah. But the, on the business side, resoundingly customers are saying, cultural alignment. Boomi understands our business. Yeah. And so what you guys are enabling on the transformation of people side, as John mentioned, you're delivering that because it was one of the things that customers have said, that was one of the deciding factors in going with Boomi and they'll say, we, we evaluated A, B, and C. Yeah. And this cultural alignment, I mean, Boomi has fans and it sounds yep. kind of cliche yep. to say, it's true. Well, I, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. And, and that is really great to hear. Listen, I stood up on stage last year and this year and repeated the phrase, I don't want to be their software vendor. I don't think of it that way. Nobody on my team thinks about it that way. We're building, I want to be your transformation partner. I want to be a part of, a piece of, how you're moving your business forward, whatever it takes to do that. Workflows, mobile applications, data integration, warehouse problems, insights. We, we can get engaged in all of that. We can go end to end in your enterprise to open it up for you and, and provide access for your customers in ways you never dreamed of. And being a part of that is just an awesome thing for us. Chris, I want to get your reaction to some um, comment Michael Dell made, two comments Michael Dell made to me on theCUBE. 2014, I asked him, besides VMware, the crown jewel of Dell Technologies, what are you excited about? He said Pivotal. He was, he was fixated on Pivotal at that time. Okay, Pivotal goes public, they get bought back into the fold. It's all, all going on. Last year at, uh, at his event, I asked him, what are you focused on this year? What, no, what's getting your focus? He goes, booming. What's your reaction to that? Because you know, Michael, when he gets fixated on something, things happen. Um, what, what's your reaction to that? 
Uh, my reaction is thank you, Michael, uh, for the brand awareness. I certainly appreciate that. Certainly, when he focuses on them, it gets attention. You know, we have Boomi. The Boomi business, as it gets capitalized by Dell, has been has has had a hundred percent executive support. Everything we've ever asked for as a leadership team, we've gotten yeah. and then some. Could not be a better situation for this business, the Boomi business. And then what Michael does for it, and as we push that forward, I believe and he believes that data is the fuel of AI in the future. It's going to be all about data, and Boomi sits right in the middle of that. And he likes to look under the hood too. He's not just a business guy, he's a techie. So he's going to look, he's looking under the hood. He likes what he sees. <laughs> when, when, when he's talked to me about it, he's been pleased with the results to date. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that. Excellent. Well, we have this, <laughs> this great, as we wrap things up, a story that is near and dear to not just my heart, but many hearts. Talk to us about what this is, what Boomi is doing with the American Cancer Society, which I just think is phenomenal. Yeah, Lisa, I really appreciate it. So uh, this morning, and I'll just kind of hold this up for a moment, but this morning we had the American Cancer Society as one of our reference customers, how they completed nine projects in 14 months, one of which impacted 30,000 patients, achieving 500,000, half a million rides, and integrated together 150 partners to make sure people could get to their life-saving treatments and back. And it's a volunteer network. We're happy to be a part of that. So we, you know, we, we took, undertook a cause. We're going to have to pass the baton for the American Cancer Society here at Boomi World. And every time we pass the baton, $2, $1 from us, being matched by Dell Technologies makes it $2, and we're going to pass the baton here, hoping to crush it and get to a $20,000 donation. So if I could pass the baton to each of you. Absolutely. There's $2, John, if you'd keep doing it. I want to ring the bell. I want to crush <laughs> this for the American Cancer Society. That's awesome. Pass it to the Thank team. you. Exactly, throw it over there. Pass it around to everybody. Let's keep <laughs> well, this Chris, thing hopping. Like, don't throw it. That is we'll pass it around. such an outstanding story. There are so many, as you said, there's going to be a hundred different customers talked about here over the next, probably started yesterday with Partner Summit today there and is. tomorrow. Yep. That's a lot. Yep. We ha are happy to have a whole bunch of them on the program today and hear how many different use cases Boomi is facilitating. It's, yeah. you, know, you guys have taken iPaaS way beyond connecting cloud to on-prem, it's edge, it's any data, any device, low code. Yep. I know I'm speaking your language. Yep. I, I love it. But we're hearing that, we're feeling that, we're excited to be able to share that through theCUBE this week. Lisa, well listen, thank you for being here at Boomi World. It's always great to have you, it's great to talk to you. Likewise. And, and I'm looking forward to a great show. Thanks for coming but up. Thank you. All right, our pleasure. Appreciate it. For Chris McNabb and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 2019. Thanks for watching.